interesting subject. Very, I could say, iconic or iconic, how to say that in English, iconic subject. Uh, very, very, very bad algorithm. But when I learned that in my school, uh, nobody told me that it is bad algorithm. But nevertheless, it's really funny, really uh, uh, good to start learning algorithms. And very iconic algorithm which you should not use uh, in any way in production, but still you could learn that. And this algorithm have this funny name, bubble sort, bubble sort algorithm. bubble sort so what the problem we're talking about so by the way in your readings you have link to sorting arrays you have additional link to read about another algorithms like selection sort uh, and uh, another sorting so that subject could be a bit complicated right Nevertheless, try to read that. But now, I propose you to have this conversation about bubble sort. So, why are we talking about sorting? So, what do you think? Okay, tell me, please. Uh, do you have these applications, or could you do you have some? Uh, could you remind yourself uh, that cases when you need sorting? When you need to sort? something to make it in correct order yeah list of contacts list of contacts exactly list of contacts in our phones it is sorted right just imagine to search something without sorting okay another uh, ideas what else you need to sort Files in your operating system. When you explore the files, right? You you would like to sort it. What kind of sorts do you have when we're talking about folders and files? Uh, size by size by by size by by number by by letter by name by alphabet by alphabet by dates of creation or dates of uh, addition, right? Exactly. Uh, it really helps us to. Uh, like navigate through the information when we know that this particular part these particular files are sorted for example i have uh, some folders which i sort in the order of uh, last uh, uh, editing and uh, i always have on the top that uh, specific uh, particular files which i just uh, edit and it is easy to find that because they sorted and that is uh, very good for me that I could sort that. Okay, do you have uh, another examples of sorting? Yeah. Uh, scoreboards in a video game. Okay, video games and uh, scoreboards, right. So we, we have this uh, sorted uh, players and we know who is the best and so on. And again, in that case, we use sort. Exactly. Any other examples? Wish list, how would you like to sort your wish list? Size, size, size. Yeah, it is just format. But what order for your wish list? Like for the cost. For the cost, for example. Exactly. And by the way, when we talk about the cost, could you just, I just waiting for this example. Uh, what else about cost, sorting uh, by cost? What other uh, like information systems do you visit? Exactly. Some uh, Rosetka or any other online shop, uh, you could or, uh, you could sort your uh, products uh, in in uh, different uh, kind of sortings, right? So basically, all internet shops propose you quite uh, wrong sorting at the very beginning. It is that search engine specialists they just put uh, some specific chosen uh, products, but always you go maybe you not, but I do. I go to that uh, interface and choose from the cheapest to more expensive, right? And starting to watch these products in such a way. Because price is kind of a very important factor for me and for uh, 
uh, all of us and we like to uh, like make a correct order for us to make choice so this idea that we use ordering or sorting just everywhere in information system just everywhere that's why this sorting algorithms they are so important and from from a uh, previous century uh, when computer science developed this this is particular one of the biggest issues challenges and ideas which we should implement in our systems how to sort something how to sort that okay so that's why let's talk about bubble sort and let's think how can we sort something so i propose you have let's have just four elements of our array array and we will work with these values and you propose me which values will we have here first element your ideas I random numbers two. okay two here that 24 what 24 24 okay 13 minus one 13 minus one okay wonderful so by the way you should understand sorting when we talk about for example alphabetical sort we could think oh what um uh, relation to these numbers are alphabetical uh, values have a b c d e and so on but if we assign values like numbers to these letters <laughs> we just have the same problem but we our computer manipulate with numbers of course so that's why every symbolic everything dates or we could just reduce somehow to numbers and at the very end of the problem price alphabetic sort dates we have just this particular pro problem when we just sort numbers so that's why it all uh, could be reduced to this uh, uh, sort of, of this kind. So it's really have relation to, to real world. This is the idea. Okay, I put this number just for you and just for me, but when you are a computer and you should think as a computer, as a Java uh, environment, you don't see this array. For you, it is just array with four numbers. You don't see these exact values now. So, when you create loops, then we could access some specific numbers and we could see, oh, I see these numbers now, and when I could go to another iterations, I already forgot what it was. Because the computer can see all these four numbers at one time. We just move from one to another, because we know that computer is quite stupid thing. And we should really detail it propose really detailed algorithm. So, this is the idea of bubble sort. That we go many times through our array. Four times, because we have, for example, let it be four times. As many elements do we, we have, as many times we will go through this array. What shall we do? We move in first iterations, we consider two values. Like, we have i counter, you know that, it is our loop counter. We start in from, for example, let it be zero. And we see element zero and element zero plus one, which means one. So we compare this element and this element. I mean index zero and index one. So that means index zero, index one. And we compare these two elements. And we know, we decide if this element bigger than this element, array, ah, sorry. Array with uh, element with the index zero is bigger than element of index one, then we swap these two elements. So if t 
2 bigger than 24, then we swap. Why do we swap? Because we want from smaller values to bigger values. And in such a way, we compare and we know that if we have some value here, it will move here and here and here. And just like a bubble, when you have Coca-Cola and this bubble moves just to the top. So here we compare element zero and element one. Does zero element bigger than first element? No, we do nothing. Okay, second iteration. Now we, can, we already forgot what was here, and now we know what is here, 24 and 13. Our Java uh, don't see anything else, just see two, these two values, and we should decide. So we compare here, 24 is bigger than 13. Yes, that means that it is wrong here. We understand that we don't want this sorting. We want to, to swap that. So we make swap. We put this value here and this value we put here, okay? So that means that now we make this swap and we put, 20, uh, we put 13 here. Oh my. We put 13 here and we put 24 here. So we make some changes in our array. So that's why it is 13 here and 24 here. Okay, now we move to next iteration. Again, as a computer, we already forgot what was, what was in previous iteration. We can't take all the things in, in our mind. Computer can do that, cannot do that. So we forgot what we had here. And we move to next to next index. So we compare this value <laughs> and this value. So again, a of two, and we compare with a of three. Okay, what it means? 24 comparing with 1. So 24 is bigger than 1, correct? What should we do? We should swap. Yes, we will. Again, put 1 here and 24 there. 1 put here, 24 put there. Okay. So, we have one here. I again erase everything in these cells because our Java do not remember anything, but for us, we have now 2, 13, 1, 24. Comparing to initial array, we got this 24, our kind of biggest value in this array, is already in the very end of our array, okay? So this is the kind of bubble symbol idea. And by the way, we don't need this iteration, why? Because when we compare, we take i and i plus one compar comparison. So if I take i plus one, that's why when I, on the one element to the end, I already compare the last element. If I move to next iteration and compare i plus one, then I will point here and will have which message? Which error? When I try to reach element which is not in my array. No. Um, it's even not now, it is, it is exception. Out of bounds exception. Absolutely, Nikita. So we are not finished with this array. We're still in the process because we see that we have a problems. We still have elements on wrong places. By the way, it was minus one. <laughs> I forgot that. Okay. So we uh, now we are 
repeat all we had here, we repeat again. It was just first, it was just first iteration of our outer loop. We want to go four times. It was just first time we go through this algorithm. So we have outer loop and we have inside that loop one more loop. So it was inner loop and now we continue our outer loop. Okay, let's go. Next iteration of, uh, of our outer loop. All right, we have two and 13. Two is bigger than 13. Now, we will not do anything, correct? Yeah. Okay, forgot these numbers. Now, our index is one and we put a i bigger than a i plus one. That means first element 13 and minus one. 13 is bigger than minus one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we need to swap. So one more swap and we do that. So we swap these elements, forgot that and put that for us like a reminder and we move to another iteration and we compare again a okay bigger than a three that means 13 and 24 so no swap because 13 is less than 24 by the way, of course, we're already sure that here we have the biggest value of array. So basically, we don't need this last iteration. But okay, it, it, it is kind of not optimized by bu bubble sort. So it was second, like it is first, oh, okay, zero iteration. It is first iteration of our bubble sort. We could see that we still have problems because we have two here and minus one here, here uh, this part of array is okay. We still need to do something to sort that. Okay, we have next iteration. Let me move, for example, here. So it was first and it is uh, outer loop have a counter equal to two. And here we go, zero, one, two, three or zero, one, two, yeah, something like that. Let's go. So again, we compare these two first numbers. I mean, E, A of zero, compare with A, one. We have two is bigger minus one, yes or no? Yes, that's why we need swap. So we swap these elements. Minus one, two. Of course, as humans, we see that our array already done, but computer is not human and computer will follow our algorithm. So that's why we should follow. Now we compare these two numbers, two, is bigger than 13. Wrong, do nothing. Then two, these two elements. 13 is bigger than 24. Wrong, do nothing. So this is it. We don't need any swaps here. So we have basically three, one, two, three outer loop iterations. And we already have sorted array we got minus one here two here 13 and 24 this is how it works now 
if we if we use pseudocode for this algorithm this is how it looks like pseudocode very concise very simple it is still not optimized but pay attention repeat n times where n equals array length size of array this stuff traverse array with j counter and in the body of this traverse do this if a j more than a j plus one swap elements swap this elements this is it very concise pseudocode so again please try to combine these ideas in your head repeat n times this stuff repeat n times repeat I mean length times so here we repeat that actually three times but we have four elements so we could say repeat four times it is again not optimized now I, I will tell you about optimization of that but we could definitely sure that if we run through this outer loop size times we will get sorted array what do we need to repeat so that means that we have outer loop and we have inner loop so we repeat uh, at least yeah we repeat this n times and then we get this inter, uh, inner loop so for again traverse array with j counter traverse array is again repeat size times just use j not e just to if you have this i for example counter here here you could use j counter i used i here but i need J if, if I follow this uh, pro uh, proposal okay inner loop and inside the inner loop you just compare two elements and make swap is needed this is it outer loop inner loop compared to elements swap uh, period this is it this is your algorithm um, so let's try to create that I could create for loop until r lands. Then again, I create one more loop with j and r lands minus one because I don't want to have this problem boundaries problem. Now I compare two elements. If tell me what to write now. Yeah. Trying to make it bigger. Why it not working? Okay, let it be. Hopefully you see. Index J. Then what next? More than what? A J plus one. J plus one. Exactly. Then, it's 
swap. Otherwise, do nothing. So, question, how to swap elements? How to swap two elements? I know that you know. Any other ideas? Yeah? <laughs> yes. Yeah, but let, let's let's play with just one more variable. Do we have common swap? No, no. So you need buffer. You need one more variable. Of course, we could play with mathematics and add two numbers and then. Uh, but if you have other types, data types just will not work. So that's why basically we need just uh, this uh, uh, buffer. What if it's complicated object? Yeah. So. Again, you have two numbers. You need to swap that. What will you do? You introduce one more cell in memory. You introduce new variable. You put this variable here. It is your first action, okay? Your next action, you put this variable into first. So now you have no access in this initial value, but that initial value is here, and it is second. And third, you use buffer to restore a first value. So this is the way. Let's do it. Let's create one more variable, like temporary variable, and assign value of j there. And by the way, it is really important to, for you to understand that. We will have this particular question in your exam. You should know how to swap elements. Quite easy stuff, but for when you begin, you, you need to, to rethink that, to understand that. Right, so then A, tell me which indexes should I put into brackets. First brackets, first element. It is now we already put this value into buffer. So we saved this first value here. Now what we do? Second value to the first. All right, so second value is j plus one, correct? First element is j, that's why we have this statement so in this moment uh, in this moment statement uh, value of first element just uh, we saved and uh, we kind of lost that value inside this element but we still save that in temporary variable can you explain what that is yes exactly uh, sure just just uh, let me finish that and i explain it one more time and now we have this j plus one and put temporarily there. So again, so again, um, yeah, I could actually use this space. You have j element with some value. Let me put triangle here. We have value of triangle in that cell. We have this j plus one and it is square here right so we could not uh, we, we could not just uh, call as as we well as swap there is no such uh, common uh, in computer so if we want to put something here we, we will just delete previous value that's why we introduce buffer call it temporary so our first action we put this value into temporary Okay, now we have two variables with the same, the same value, correct? You see that? So, in such a way, we saved this uh, state of our j element. And now our uh, j is empty. No, it is not empty. It is still have previous information. It is, uh, okay, it is interesting uh, feature of information. When you give your information to someone, you still have it. Mm -hmm. When you give money to someone, you have no that money. 
But when you give information, you give file to your friend, you have that file, and your friend has that file, has that file, okay? So the same here. This guy give his information to temporary variable, but still keep that information. Nevertheless, into next action, we, uh, we are broken, uh, breaking, oh, come on, destroying this information. Because we put j plus one into j. So we already have action number two. We have square in j, right? Because this guy give his file to this guy. And triangle is saved just in temporary variable. Correct? Do you understand that? So the same value in two elements, which is not good for us, because what next? Third action. This guy put his file to j plus one guy, right? And now we have triangle in this element. And temporary, we could say bye bye, we don't need you anymore. This is it. This is how we swap values, right? And of course, uh, we could create method swap, which is quite. Uh, Uh, convenient swap wait and we put our array here and we put uh, two indexes like k and l indexes So we could implement this swap inside this method. It is not required, we could say, but because we know what method is, methods are, we could decompose our program. So th that's why uh, that would be nice to implement that. And I change, I just uh, change that. Uh, particular indexes but the idea is the same like on that picture with triangles hopefully uh, there is no errors here so it seems like correct so I could call now swap and put my array here and put j and j plus one and these lines I could command and have this very nice beautiful swap and that would be kind of more beautiful code more concise okay so I didn't check that I, I, I will ask you to check this code is it work and let me very briefly propose you some optimizations of this bubble sort and I will give you uh, quick tasks and we will finish so first of all as you understand this outer loop iterations first second third definitely we don't need so many iterations out of outer loop this I, I talking about this outer loop how to check that so for example if I have if I uh, put to bubble sort this particular array, minus 1, 2, 13, 24, for example, do I need to swap anything in this array? In this array. This array is already sorted. Okay? So that's why it is absolutely wasting of resources to run all these many iterations. So I could introduce just flag is swapped. Swap. is swapped and run this outer loop until is swapped through when I have when I swap something I uh, assign swap is swapped through that means that something changed in my array and I still need to recheck that in case if I don't need if I didn't uh, perform any swap 
I suppose, oh, this array is already sorted. I could break. I could stop this outer loop and this is if my array is ready. This is first optimization. Think about it. If you didn't get it, please watch the additional videos just to get that. And the second idea, if you pay attention, when we run our first iteration, we get the biggest value in the, at the end of our array, correct? The biggest value. This is the essence of bubble sort. The biggest value after one traverse will be at the end. So tell me please, what the essence of this last iteration, or maybe in the second iteration, of this last iteration to compare 13 with 24. If we already know that the biggest value is here, we don't need this comparison. We, we could run our inner loop in next iteration. Just this size in this iteration. Just from zero to two. In third iteration, we need to compare just these two numbers. So it is tricky, but we could run our for loop from zero to lens kind of uh, lens minus one, because this boundary problem, but minus E, this is ID, minus I. This could be borders of inner loop. I don't want to overwhelm you with this additional information but I propose you to figure it out, to understand that, to, to watch the videos, and to understand why should we make this optimization for inner loop? Why actually it works? Just work with these numbers and to uh, watch on the piece of paper and understand what we compare, what we have. It is so important, very basic, very awful algorithm, basically. It is bad algorithm, why? Because it is a lot of iterations a lot of swapping here for, for we have additional you know discipline how we learn how to make optimized algorithms but it is really good learning an example how to understand algorithms so I propose you to learn to understand how could we optimize outer loop and how we how could we optimize inner loop understand that was a piece of paper and this is it all right so let's try to play with our task. This is your task now. Please run and ask us to check that and to give you grades. 